If like me, you are an NDI user and you spotted this Zowie box on Amazon, you're curious to know what it does and if it's any useful to you. Well, I've discovered that it is actually almost the Swiss Army knife for NDI users. So let's take a closer look. So this is what you get inside the box. You naturally get a guide, which has got the usual basic connection instructions on it. You get a nice metal box itself, which we'll go through in a second. A USB to USB cable, which is useful uh, as the item will take power from a USB socket and the inevitable power supply, which if you're in the UK is a nuisance, but uh, you have to get an adapter for, but let's not worry about that. Now the box itself is, as I say, magical what it will do. And so let us start by sort of looking at some of the faces. This side, and I'll show you in a second, is the information panel, which pops up with the ND, the um, IP address and a various other information that you might want. On the other side is a tally light, which can be set to automatic, on, off, or uh, as you wish to use it in your system. On the bottom, we've got a nice quarter inch screw thread there, so you can put a nice hot shoe adapter on that and drop it straight on top of a camera or whatever you're using. And there's a little fan and I'll put the fan on in a minute and play it on the microphone so you can hear how noisy it is, which isn't particularly noisy. Now the connections people tend to go through fairly quickly. So I'll try and explain how best to, well, I've used it anyway and see if it's, uh, if it's appropriate for you. You've obviously got a three and a half mil jacks here for headphones and line in, which is okay. If you're going to put the audio into it separate from HDMI. You've got a standard USB slot there, and that is possibly for firmware updates. But more interestingly, if you have a USB to serial port adapter for your PTZ camera, then that's how you would do it and it'll actually control your PTZ cameras for you as well. Then you've got the HDMI out as well. So if you want a on-site monitor to reference, to look at rather than just assuming your camera's plugged in and everything's working, then that's what you can set there. On the other end, you have the inevitable HDMI in and of course it will take up to 4K30, uh, I think, and uh, HD at, uh, uh, to, well, depending where you are, PAL or, or NTSC, but uh, 50 or 60 uh, frames. Then you've got the 12 volt DCI out. Uh, there's a bit of a question mark how best to use this, and uh, I haven't actually tested it as yet, so it's uh, it's open. But potentially, if you've got your Ethernet port here and you're putting your P PoE connection in there, getting your NDI HX1, 2, or 3. Uh, out um, the power that's going through your ethernet can also come up from the output i presume but as i say i haven't tested it and then finally is the usb c which i've been using with a little power block when i've been using it in a portable situation so that's pretty well the unit itself nice solid box and uh, I have to say that I've been very impressed. Everything I've plugged it into has worked with a few limitations. So let's just plug it in and take a closer look of the face and then the interface. One thing I forgot to mention during that quick run through was just above the HDMI out socket, there is a micro SD slot and that enables you to pop a card in there, uh, usually formatted, I think, to FAT and allows you to record whatever you put through it, all of which can be controlled from the app and from the uh, web browser. So let's take this a stage further now. I've now got this camera showing the front of the box, and that's the display screen that you get, which it gives you the basic information about how much memory you've got and the IP address and etc. And you can see I'm doing this at uh, 1080 at 50. Right, so let's now go over in the interface, uh, which we've got here. Right, now I've set it as a decoder and it will decode and encode H uh, NDI, HX, HX2 and HX3. However, I'm using VMEX at the moment, which only outputs full HDI, uh, NDI. Too many letters to a uh, full NDI. So it's going through NDI bridge to allow the Zowie box to pick it up and decode it. So 
that's what's currently working. So I've set it as a NDI HX decoder at the moment. And the screen there, as you can see, has got all the information that you would want to have and have access to. Uh, it tells you how much memory you've got, if you've got an SD card in, uh, you can do pings as well to make sure everything is running as it should do. And at the moment, the camera settings uh, don't really refer to anything because obviously it is picking up NDI at the moment. However, if I flipped it over to being a encoder rather than a decoder, then a, if I plugged a HDMI camera into it, it would appear here. And if you were using a USB to serial uh, cable to control your Visca PTZ camera, this is where you would do it. The tally is uh, set to uh, auto and manual, and it's a nice bright tally too. I wonder if I can actually set it on at the moment. Yes, it's on. Let's get back to the camera, which is whoops, there. So you can have red, you can have green, or you can have auto. Uh, let's go back to the interface. Uh, video at the moment, as you can see, is just showing output and I'm in PAL land, so the output is at uh, 1080 50 and the loop out button switches on the loop out to a HDMI connected monitor uh, at your local source. The streaming menu, as you can see, only decoder is enabled at the moment and at this moment in time this is all the NDI that it's picking up however when I click on full NDI which would be my uh, vmix one output one here it is unable to decode it whereas it's now picking up the NDI output via the bridge NDI bridge and it's decoding it no problem at all uh, in the network menu you can create a hotspot with the Zoe box so therefore you can switch that on and you can control the box from your phone on location. It will obviously attach to a Wi-Fi network as well, which is my Wi-Fi network here. And there's all the usual uh, port and D uh, DNS uh, controls that you might want to go to. The only thing that I do find frustrating with it, when you're actually switching NDI on and off, you have to restart the box which is fair enough and you'd expect to go to logout to find a restart button but it's not there it is uh, just going through this you can see it set to decoder uh, there's the ndi that's activated it's in under default which is a strange place to put d restart i would have re rather have restart up here at the top menu so i can see what's going on but otherwise uh, once you found it it's okay um, there is no automatic indication whether the firmware has been updated and i went on the zowie tech website and there's no indication where to look for it so if zowie tech are watching this it would be nice to have a yes there is a firmware update available uh, because obviously once the box is, box is connected to the internet then it should automatically pick up there's a firmware so really awareness of when there is a firmware is available would be nice to have that here okay so that's it in its decode uh, situation let's now switch over and put it into the encode okay so i am now showing you the camera looking at the box the camera is plugged into the Zoe Tech box so it's looking at the screen and you can see the various data that's going on there uh, I did say about I'd tell you about the fan and give you an example at the moment uh, the box is getting warm but it doesn't really get beyond a little bit warm uh, but anyway I'll put the fan near the microphone not sure if you can hear that or not um, my obviously my PC is running in the background as well okay so that is the camera looking at the box this is now the view of the interface so this is the interface now and therefore this is the image that you would see in the interface which is slightly blurry um, and it's a bit slower I think frame rate but obviously it's coming off the interface to view the box so it's just to give you a taster of what you're seeing you can do all sort of clever things with this as well which is uh, i didn't realize you can actually uh, zoom in oh no oh, hang on a second let's get that right 
uh, go full screen. Uh, you can zoom in like so. You can move it around. Where are we here? That one, move it around and then that resets it. Uh, on the top right hand side here you see that it has remembered the last few things that I've done uh, so when I have uh, tested it out and sent it to a YouTube restream uh, or a live view test uh, using this box then it's remember the details so I could use that as a shortcut. So once again if you get into this interface with your phone uh, on site in situ you can quickly access some of the settings and some of the presets. The PTZ control here that would obviously come into play once you have a serial port connected to your PTZ camera through the USB connection I mentioned earlier on. Uh, once again very clever. Okay so over to the main dashboard uh, once again you've seen that information before uh, the camera will just tell you uh, if you're using a PTZ camera and tally and that sort of thing, which we're not necessarily interested in. Um, in the video, it'll tell you what I'm running at at the moment, which is uh, 1080-50p. Um, it's encoding and it will encode into two streams, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, 264, uh, I've got it running at CBR on uh, HD and that's quite, I'm quite happy with that with 100% bitrate and it's putting out a lovely signal. Um, the output is switchable then whether I want the loop out coming out of the box for a local monitor. I suppose if you were a gamer or whatever this is the sort of thing you might be wanting it to do. Uh, now this is pretty cool. This is the on-screen display. Now can I show you this in practice? Uh, so you're able to add text. You can start different um, menus. So you could have one that says this is a display text test um, and you could have another one which is demo mode or you could have whatever and this can be overlaid over the image and you can just switch this on um, and yeah <laughs> it's useful should you wish some kind of ID or um, logo you're you're able to add images as well and so you can have a logo over your stream which can be automatically going out to wherever uh, and you can switch this on and off so let's just go back to the interface so yep that just switches that on and off and you just simply add text put the text name in, whatever you want to call it, put your text in here. You've got a variety of sizes of text, uh, the weight of the text. Uh, in fact, let me just go back to the previous one here. That's better. So you can show the sizes of the text, uh, change the color and also the transparency mode. And I suspect you can do exactly the same with the logo as well. So if you want a little business logo in the corner for your stream, you can set it so that automatically comes up. The box will remember it and you just turn it on. How cool is that? Um, with the audio, you've got a maximum bit rate of 128, which is pretty good, it's adequate, it does the job. And again, you can switch this on and off should you wish not to have audio coming through your camera system or whatever you're putting through the system, which is cool. Um, in the streaming, uh, you've got obviously the local streams. Uh, when you want to go to anywhere else, again, you can see that I've added uh, some test streams here I was doing through YouTube, Restream and Live View and uh, simply you just add something in here with all the data, the usual stream key and it will remember it etc and away you go so that when you come back to being online in situ at a remote location you can just log into the box, switch everything on that you want to switch on and away you go. Uh, record, I haven't got a memory card plugged in at the moment but I have recorded on it and it's a, a perfectly adequate usable mp4 file uh, which is fine. Now it's running obviously at the moment outputting hx2 this is where you change it to either hx or hx3 I just happen to have it set on hx2 and that's working fine uh, and obviously you can switch on multicast should you wish to do so. Um, 
With the network, you can set the box up as a hotspot so you can access the box. The box will also scan your Wi-Fi and will output via your Wi-Fi, but obviously Ethernet port is by far the better way to go. And we're back to the system menu as well there, which has got everything you want it to do. So you either tell it's an encoder or a decoder. Uh, you can either switch the NDI on or off and um, everything else is what you'd expect it to be. So there you are, the Zowie box by Zowie Tech. Here's the fan running right next to the microphone. Not the loudest fan in the world, but it is there. So if I was using that with a camcorder, I'd make sure there was a, a reasonable distance between the mic and the, and the fan. Uh, I found it to be a remarkable little tool and I've also got all sorts of ideas for it in my NDI network capacity. But don't forget, it will also output RTMP and SRT. So one of the uses would be to have it remotely with a camera or even uh, have a switcher plugged into it, SRTing it directly to my vMix system, uh, which can be remote, and uh, then bringing in the signal into the um, network into the program I'm doing uh, or perhaps with live view I'm a live view user um, I might uh, have an NDI system network somewhere this would act as an NDI decoder output the HDMI into the live view and the live view could then broadcast so many uses for this little box so um, I'm really keen to look at some more of um, um, Zowie Tech's products but as a starting one I'm very impressed so I hope that's not too long for you and has given you a bit of a background, but I'm definitely giving it a thumbs up.